One woman who knows the wrath of Vladimir Putin firsthand is Nadia Tolokonikova, a founding member of the Russian protest group Pussy Riot. She was sentenced to two years in prison after an anti-Putin performance. She joins me now for the first time here in New York. It's so cool to actually meet you. We've only talked over satellite and stuff. Amazing to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you look at the war in Ukraine, I mean, the obviously there were huge failures of the, the Russian forces and incredible victories by Ukrainians early on in the fight for Kyiv and, and other part, places. Russia's obviously having more success in parts of the Donbass right now. Um, what do you see... I mean, what, what do you see Vladimir Putin's position? How do you see it right now? Is he stronger than ever in in Russia? Mm, I don't. I don't feel. I don't feel it's uh, like that. Um, a lot of experts inside of Russia they uh, propose to um, divide this war in two stages, and uh, some people talk even about two wars. So the first war, uh, Putin um, has lost. Yeah. Because he wanted to capture Kiev really quickly. Right, and which they thought they could do in 12 hours or so, and obviously did not. And there are multiple, you know, the hackers uh, from Billing Hat and other um, agencies there to try to capture like, what, what Russians uh, were talking with each other about. Yeah. And they were totally sure that they're going to be able to capture Kiev. So they lost that war and they completely had to change. Um, not just their strategy, but uh, also uh, also people who had um, the war. So it's basically a completely different operation right now. It's a completely yeah. different war. Um, and also goals that Putin uh, stayed for um, the, the internal use, like the goals that they um, announced in Russian propaganda are completely different as well. Right. So they stopped talking about denazification, basically, because nobody believes in denazification uh, um, anymore, because nobody actually understood what um, actually they're talking about. I, you know, we talked one time a while ago, and you were saying that you had members of your own family in Russia who believe Vlad what Vladimir Putin was saying about the war. Yeah. Is that st still the case? I mean, that, that they still believe that? Um, they do still believe that, yeah. Um, hmm. they, still, they still believe everything that us being told them on the TV. But, you know, uh, as, um, you know, a colleague of mine, um, a reporter, Julia, Yoffe says, imagine if you guys were able to watch just Fox News for the last 20 years. Mm. So what, what would happen in your mind? You know, like we all know about how flexible and, mm, I mean, like how flexible our mind is and how easily it manipulated and changed by things like Cambridge Analytica or, you know, like Russian intervention in United States politics. Mm -hmm. and. So imagine living under um, like, uh, under Putin's uh, oppressive rule and listening just to Russian propaganda for years. Like obviously you'll start yeah. to believe it. When, when uh, you know Alexei Navalny, who you're, I believe you know, you're friends with. Uh, he is my friend. Yes, since yeah. 2007. He's been moved to a, to another prison. You were sent to a, a, a penal colony for for two years. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I can't imagine just the terror of the unknown of going there and then having two years of your life taken away from you for something you believe in, for something you do, I think for many people it's, it, it's, it's something they, it's unimaginable. What, mm. what is it like to be in a Russian, Russian penal colony for two years, for something you think and, and speak about? Um, it's, it's really important to keep talking about what's happening with Alexei Navalny. I think the biggest fear that every political prisoner has is to be forgotten mm. because you can't actually use your voice and uh, it's really difficult to communicate with the outside world and uh, the government makes uh, everything they could to move you f as far away from public eye as possible. So what, uh, what have just what they just done with Alexei Navalny, they moved him um, further away from Moscow in hope that um, journalists were not going to follow him and his family as well. Um, and, um, you know, the more we talk about him, the more we give hope not just to not just to um, ourselves, but also to him, mm. because uh, I think for him it's important for, to be, for his voice to be amplified. Um, another really, another thing that really worries me right now that he was moved to this penal colony, and I think partly he was moved there because um, Russian authorities do not want to hurt or possibly murder Navalny with their their own hands, but mm. they would rather 
uh, it be done by hands by other prisoners. Mm. And this is something that happened with, with me in penal colony. I was receiving death threats that were delivered to me not through the hands of uh, government officials themselves, but through other prisoners, other prisoners who prisoners. work for the administration. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's really such a pleasure to talk to you, and I, I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Nani Tolokonikova, thank you so much.